What is up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Support Gaming Network. I am Zimmy and today we have a special little treat. We are starting a brand new series called Crowfall Diaries. Basically, this is going to be a series where we talk about the upcoming patch notes, the dev diaries, leading up to 5.1 War of Gods. You're also going to get some opinions of mine, and we're also going to see what the community has to say about these different kinds of changes, and potentially we will even go farther once 5.1 is released. So sit back, enjoy the ride, and make sure you hit that subscribe button and that little bell to know every time I upload a video. And here we are at the developer diary for classes. Basically what this whole entire dev diary is about is the changes of classes in 5.1. So the first couple paragraphs is just a little bit of fluff, but the important part is that it is done by Thomas Blair, one of the developers on Crowfall, one of the main developers on Crowfall, and it covers the classes for 5.1 going on to the uh, next paragraph basically they're gonna sit there and they're talking about the focus that they've had going into 5.1 um, all the way up to 5.1 and basically it is a long development process and their big focus is features in the game uh, doing classes doing new um, campaigns and everything else so once they get this done, their goal is then to go back and do bug fixes and start optimizing the game. If you don't already know, 5.1 is going to be the start of beta. Once it is out of the test test realm, it is going to go to the live test environment. And then once that's official, that's when they'll start doing the beta and they're going to start sending out invites to people who have not actually backed the game yet. So moving into the next paragraph, we're going to be talking about, as I mentioned, character races and the changes that they're going to be doing. The big focus for them was making sure that the racials for every single race are unique and kind of independent from each other. Um, they sit and talk about uh, th them wanting it to be a uh, goal for them to decrease the homogenization of each class. They felt like as the game has slowly progressed that the classes had been drifting towards uh, the homogeny and being the same as each other and they really wanted to get away from that like other MMORPGs. As you know in a lot of MMORPGs most of the classes tend to have the same style of racial abilities and there's really not a whole lot of strategic value to them and it's just kind of pick one that you like that, that looks cool. So that's what this dev diary is about and this is what they're going to be doing in 5.1. I'm going to take a little excerpt out of, out of this paragraph here and basically this is exactly what they say. Over the course of the last few updates, I feel we've been drifting towards increasing homogeny between races. For example, everyone gets two crafting based increases, two combat based increases, and one harvesting increase. This is contrary to our design goal of making each race feel different from each other as that makes the choice of which race to play much more interesting. Going down a little bit farther, they talk about how certain races tended to have a gap between the others and then they also go further and talk about how some classes actually benefit or not classes sorry races uh, actually benefit for the class that they choose uh, such as ex uh, assassins and then this other excerpt I'm taking is in some cases, this inevitably leads to synergies between certain race class combinations. For example, Brigand Rangers don't get the Quiver trait, however, Elkin do get the Quiver trait as part of their race package. So an Elkin Brigand might be a good option. So what they're talking about here is that they want synergy between races and classes. Not only that, but some 
races uh, will actually, you'll need to play differently in. And we'll talk about that a little bit farther as we go down. Here's some of the racial disciplines that they show, which is an Elkin and a High Elf. As you can see here, uh, attributes for an Elkin give constitution and strength, while a High Elf just gets intellect. Statistics wise, they have the same cap increases, but different values to them. For example, Elkin has 350 constitution cap and 250 strength cap, whereas the High Elf has only 200 constitution cap and 200 strength cap. Here we can also see the different passives that they're going to have. Uh, I won't go too in depth with them, but as you can see, they're definitely different. Moving on to the next paragraph, uh, they talk about how some racials are going to be unique to the class uh, and may benefit some races over others. For example, here they're talking about the Stoneborn, which will have an anti-bleed mechanic because they're made of stone. Uh, and as you can see here, this is the passive. Coagulation has a chance to instantly remove all bleed effects on you whenever a bleed effect is applied to you. Another very interesting one is the Centaur. As you know, they are half human and half horse. So what they did is kind of played to that ability, played to that style of race, and they gave them a passive called Surefooted, which prevents damage from rem removing you from a mounted state. As you know, or as you may know, the if you take damage when you're mounted, you can get dismounted. Uh, there's a chance for it. However, if you're playing Centaur, you can actually just stay in the mounted state the entire time because you'll have this passive. Next, we're going to talk about the Fey. And here the Fey is kind of a nature style uh, race. And what better to do, uh, what better racial to have is being kind of nature resistant. And in this case, they're actually going to be toxins. They actually go in hand in hand with Stoneborn in this sense, where instead of it being an anti-bleed mechanic, it is an anti-toxin mechanic. And it has a chance to instantly remove all toxin effects on you whenever a toxin effect is applied. It's going to be very interesting with these types of passives because I can see a lot of theory crafting going on and a lot of players who min max will actually uh, take this into account when they're creating their character. Now, interesting enough, the Ginnikins, I may have screwed that name up, but since they're the more industrious culture in the world of Crowfall, they're actually going to have something slightly different where it increases your plentiful haul uh, when doing caravans. So they will have an interesting passive. However, they make sure they make a point and say, don't worry, there are other methods to improve your caravan results. So you will know that there will be talents and other things um, that will help increase other races to be able to do the same thing. But of course, Ginnikin will actually have the most if someone is very interested in caravans. The last one, uh, once again, this is going hand in hand with what the race is about in the world and uh, what type of classes they can play. For example, in this one here, we're talking about uh, they're talking about the Nathari, which has always been a focus class to play assassins. So what they did is they gave a passive to them that allows them to increase their movement speed when in stealth by 20% compared to the other races. So once you once again, you can see the synergy here between classes and races. So it's going to be interesting how they do it. And then the last paragraph, which is probably the most important and kind of you can really see what their goal is here, is that choices matter from the very beginning of the game when you're creating your own character till the end game as well when you're fighting other races and classes. They're very, very pointed on... Uh, trying to make sure that there is synergy between not only races and classes, but 
other races and classes as well. So you may see some synergy between two players who uh, have certain races and certain classes that buff each other up. They wanted to make sure they uh, didn't add too much synergy into this because obviously too much synergy just is the opposite of homogenization. Uh, there's no uniqueness to the gameplay, but here they actually are trying to minimize it so it's worthwhile. And I do see once 5.1 is released, a lot of players are going to get together and start talking about their groups and how they're going to be doing PvP and what races and classes benefit them the most and to their play style. Uh, this last sentence here is the best part of this entire thing. And it's the choice of character race should be one step in the chain of how you build a character. And that choice is only interesting if it provides distinct benefits and trade-offs between unique uh, avenues that are mutually exclusive and extremely appealing. I really, really like this, this mindset that they have of really trying to make the game unique uh, compared to other MMORPGs and how they are uh, making sure that there is strategy involved not just in the end game but also from the start. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this one. Let me know what you think in the comments below and you can also check out my stream right here where we discuss Crowfall and other MMORPGs as well. I stream Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday at 10 p.m. plus 9 GMT. You can also see on Saturday where I stream at 10 a.m. plus 9 GMT. Thank you guys again for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to smash that like button, and I'll see you on the next one. The third one running around. UD Pro's healer. I got knocked down.